thing is the estimation of the cost of the upgrade. There's a first phase, there's a second phase, there's a third phase. The first phase was started when this contract was awarded to the, uh, what is it called? Uh, Blackhead. Blackhead, the a company implicated in state capture. That contract failed, I think about a year ago, 60% of that work was completed. So 40% of the first phase stands to be completed. We hope to complete that within the first financial year of the budget. But the second phase is the crucial part. That's the major upgrade. That's the 2.5 billion. And that's the money that we don't have. So where did we get the 450 million now scattered over three financial years? Well, we reprioritized. This crisis hit us in the middle of a budget process. In that budget process, the inputs that we got from, the, from communities in general was about quality of water, was about problems with sewerage. So we took those inputs, the mayoral committee met this week. Uh, I want to emphasize we must still determine the source of the cholera, but it's highlighted this plight of people in Hamadskral and the urgency of moving on it. So by our own resources, even the 450 million over three financial years, that's not going to solve the problem. I want to emphasize that. We need to source external funding. We need to devise a solution where somebody who has capital contributes that capital to make up the gap. I don't want to make promises here or talk nonsense that will come back to destroy our credibility. Our approach is going to be to be candid, but also to take some steps and to take joint responsibility. I mentioned our meeting with the Minister on Friday. Our technical teams met earlier this week. We've met with the Development Bank of Southern Africa. Those talks will hopefully produce some results that will unlock um, this, uh, this project so we can start delivering results. Let me just also mention that operationally there are certain things that we are expecting further test results today. As we know, the net of those tests have been cast wider after it was discovered that the water from the taps uh, through the timber system is not the source of the contamination. But we still have to find the source because if we don't, we can't contain the problem. Now, we know that this crisis has drawn attention to the long-standing problem of the quality of water delivered to the people of Hamans Kral, especially through the Tswane supply area in Temba. It is not an issue that can be ignored any longer. We've reached the end of a long line of failures and excuses. Today, MMC Peter Sutton is presenting a budget in which the largest single allocation is made to the refurbishment of the Roval wastewater treatment plant thus far. We're committing 450 million rand over the next three years, 150 million rand in each of the years of the budget. Now, that is not enough to solve the problem. We've said over and over again, the resources of the city of Tswane are simply too limited to do the upgrades there. We also have serious supply chain management issues with irregular tenders yeah. being approved by this city in the past that we've got to be honest about. So we lack the resources, we lack the expertise, we're going to need partnerships, but this contribution of 450 million rand in the next three years, 150 million in the next financial year, is a bold step to start solving the problem. We know we're going to need to partner with uh, other spheres of government. We're talking to the Development Bank of Southern Africa. We'll talk to other possible financiers to make up that gap. The second phase of the upgrades at Royval will cost 2.5 billion rand, which we've emphasized is the entire capital budget of the city in any one financial year. So the 450 million is not going to solve the problem, but it is an important step. On Friday, I'm meeting with the Minister of Water Affairs to discuss, as we agreed last week, the solutions to Royval. I get a very positive sense from the Minister's attitude that this will be a clean break and now we'll start to solve the problem. It is very unfortunate that the EFF has pulled a political stunt here, trying to politicize this matter, trying to score cheap points and trying to prevent the MMC for Finance from delivering the budget speech and starting the process so that we can move on Royval. They have to account for that. They have to account for that. We're in negotiations now with the Speaker and the leaders of other political parties to say, let the budget speech happen. Why would you want to prevent it from happening? All political parties will tomorrow, when there's a council meeting, have the opportunity 
to debate the budget, to make their representations, but why would you want to block the city from putting the budget speech on the table? That's the essence of it. I hope we can move quickly today uh, and that we can eliminate all excuses. But because of this delay, because of the sabotage, I've asked my team to release the budget speech uh, of the MMC so that the people can see. If the politicians want to block that budget from being read by the people, let the people see what we've committed in that budget. So one very important message to journalists and to producers is that there's this tactic of the ANC sending in their own members uh, to take, to put on ordinary shirts and then to call themselves community members and then to deliver political messages. Last night I was on JJ Tabane and there was somebody who called themselves a community member. It was in fact one of the folks that had blocked us from uh, going and to visit Jubilee, well-known ANC representative. So please wise up to this. The community doesn't want to cause violence and destruction. It is political interest driving that. Now, what you've mentioned about water tankers is an important question. We've got to be honest about this. If we solve Roiva, we put the water tankers out of business. I don't want to make any allegations, but we've heard from community members that there are instances of abuse. We've got to take those in the allegations seriously. We want folks who get water from water tankers to note the number plates of those trucks and if there are instances of abuse the national attention of the country is now focused on Hamas craft let's use this opportunity if there are instances of abuse we've gone through the contracts of those water con uh, water tankers if there are instances of abuse we have the clauses in those contracts to end them immediately if there are further investigations needed into this issue, let's do it. But now is not the time to paper over anything or to cover anything up.